Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. Okay, today I'm going back to some old tricks and I'm trying some new tricks. The old trick would be that I have added my Niwer 36, 32, whatever, that big ass softbox back into the mix. I decided that it was unfortunate that I bought that thing and that it produced such wonderful results, but it was so big that I had to take it out and put it in the garage. So I decided, you know what, screw it. Let me see how I can rearrange all this stuff and get it to fit and work perfectly. So I tried it in a couple of different positions all around and finally found a spot over there that is basically right below the ceiling fan, which it needs to be because, I mean, in the summer times, it, gets, it just gets too friggin' hot in here. Right now, in the winter, it's not that bad, but I still needed it out of the way. I have also, again, decided to sell my ZV-1, but I don't know how easy it's gonna be to sell it, and I'm not going to hinge on selling it. I mean, I already paid for it, so I don't really care, but rather than just have it sit around and do nothing, I actually added it as a third camera over on that side of the studio, just so that you can sort of see how I have all this stuff set up. And then, of course, I have my other A6600 right there, in the main A6600 on the center rig. I'm totally digging this. I mean, I put the blue lights back on just so that you can see how different the lighting is with the softbox. Because if I didn't have the softbox and I had that light right here above the Ninja turned on, it just had a honeycomb and two diffusion fabric thingies put over it. And it still, it like whited a lot of this out. But now you can see, because of the softbox with the honeycomb on it, how it is basically has me lit well on the cameras, but not blown out. And it isn't taking away any of the accent lighting that I've got going on around me. So I'm kind of digging it. It is like walking through a maze in here. And I have to remember that I have my light stand over there now. And the other A6600 is on my Manfrotto tripod over there and I've got power cords running all over the place so I really have to be aware that I have changed all this stuff because I've already tripped like 20 times and smacked into the chair and run into the desk and all that shit and tripped over cords that's the most important thing is that the cords there isn't really much I can do with it I mean I have to have the more I have to have because I got to run power but I have to be careful of that because kicking a stand while it hurts like hell it isn't really going to do anything because I have it all basically out there so that nothing's going to get tipped over. But if I trip over a cord, not only can I then take out the light, but that can go into the chair, which can go into the desk, which can go into the computer, which knocks over the tripod. You know, like it could be very disastrous. So really what it gets down to is I have to watch what the hell I'm doing. As far as everything else goes, because I had an epiphany last night when I was doing multicam. I have tried multicam before, but that was after watching a video while I was trying to do a video edit and I wasn't really paying attention and I was frustrated and I had been looking at this crap for two hours and trying the old way and the new way and looking it up on the internet. So finally, yesterday, I had the time to sit down, watch a couple of things, do a multicam edit more or less by pulling it in and making it multicam and then sitting down and I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed at how easy it is to, to do multicam and switch to different angles and so on and so forth. And like going over to here to this angle, it's a right click. It's so stupid that I didn't figure that out. But I was hangry. I'd been working on it for two hours, trying to get a video posted while doing my day job and having deadlines for that. <laughs> so yeah, it sucked. And, and shame on me for, for blowing it out of proportion and making it a hundred times more difficult than it actually is. But now that I've got it down pat, now I know how easy it is. So I will at least in studio be doing multicam edits. May not always use three cameras. And in fact, I think the ZV-1 will probably run out of battery before I even finish this video, which isn't gonna be long, I swear. But I know how to do it now. And, and adding that third camera in today, that's a new one for me, but it shouldn't be any different than and adding the second camera in. As I'm sitting here and I'm looking at these screens and I'm looking at the Ninja and I'm seeing, I've got my demon eyes, you know, all my facial hair and everything and, and the hair that's like falling down is all in focus because it's all red. Same thing over there, although it doesn't show me the, the focus because I'm not manually focusing, but over there, it is perfect. And, and I'm, I look so much better because the camera, or, I mean, the light is coming in from sort of like in between both cameras. So it's lighting that side that was all dark because th that's the dark side of the studio. Ooh. 
and I have the window covered over there. Even though it's broad daylight, it's crappy out and rainy, so it might as well be night. <laughs> it looks better. Having that softbox on there, that big 32 or 30 inch, however big it is, softbox diffusing that light. It's a game changer for my in-studio footage, and I think it looks fantastic. On that screen, I mean, I, I look well lit. I don't look blown out. I can still see all the blue highlights around me and everything. It looks really good on here because everything is blue around me, except for me, you know, except for what's coming up from behind. And all the way over there, I don't care about that third camera. I'm not trying to get perfect footage off of that thing. And it isn't gonna match the a 6600 which again, I said is why I wasn't gonna keep it, but it's perfect to show you like, here I am, here's all the blue shit. There's the blue walls, there's my, blue light lamp that I have going on to get more accent and you can see the softbox over there and how everything is set up and that's kind of what I wanted to go for I just wanted to every once in a while plop that angle in there so you can see how it's set up I get a lot of questions from people on on how I have things set up and what kind of lighting I'm using and what I'm doing and so on and so forth so I thought that I would add the third angle in there since I know how to do it now and, and that can kind of show you the setup of everything. And I take regular pictures of all these setups and stuff. Like today, I post it on Instagram, and also then and it goes to my Twitter, my Tumblr, and sometimes I have it go to Facebook because some of my friends are interested as well. And it, you can see all the setups and how it looks from both sides, whether you're on this side or you're on that side looking this way. So yeah, I like to, I, you know, I just like to show people what I'm doing. I'm excited by it, you know? I love this kind of stuff, and that's why I do it. Now, I had a little conversation with my friend Yankee Cowboy earlier, and you know we were talking about subscribers and channel growth and this, that, and the other thing, and when it got right down to it, we're birds of a feather in a lot of ways. Sometimes we both get kind of down that we're not, we're not growing, growing our channels, not getting more subscribers, we're not getting a lot of action, we're not getting a lot of comments, likes, whatever, but when it gets right down to it, I think deep down inside, we both just love this kind of shit. We love buying gear. You know that. If you follow my channel for any length of time, you know how stupid I am when I go out and I'm constantly buying new shit. And then I sell stuff, and then I go buy new stuff. I've been doing that my entire life, but as far as this kind of stuff goes, since I restarted my YouTube channel when I moved here, well, I didn't even restart it when I moved here. I didn't have time because of my day job. I don't want to get into that. It sucked, but I started buying new gear because I could afford it now. Then I just started playing with it and I bought other gear and then I started playing with that and then I decided I didn't like this gear so I got rid of it and I got other gear. And over the past, I'll say four years, I have really delved back into the things that, that made me happy, my passion, which is buying stuff and trying it out. And, and because I have what I wanna do up here, but I don't necessarily have the skill to take what's in here and make it a reality. But that's the whole point of this. That's the whole point of this journey is trying to learn how to do something, trying to do something new that allows me to take my vision that's in my melon and be shat it upon the masses. While that may only be under 300 people, give or take, because I don't really see that many people watching my videos, I, I don't care. I just like doing this. If you're out there and you're thinking to yourself, man, my channel sucks, I can't get anybody to watch stuff, this, that, and the other thing, just remember it's about the journey, not the destination. It's not about getting to a million followers. It's about learning and enjoying what you're doing and trying to share that with other people. And eventually, as you start to build your craft and build your skills and build your knowledge and, and perhaps branch off in different directions that you thought you weren't gonna go into, then the people will come along because they're gonna see your passion for what you're doing and they're going to appreciate that and they're gonna to wanna to hitch onto your little boat and go along with you. And if they don't, that's okay too. I don't care if anybody watches my stuff, to a point. I mean, I do appreciate people that watch it. I do appreciate all the questions I get, I, the likes, the dislikes. You know, I get a lot of comments that don't show up on the actual YouTube video, but the other places that I post them. And I get a lot of interaction and I get a lot of people thanking me for finding a solution to a problem that they had, for creating a video discussing something that no one else has that they couldn't find anyways, and for testing out different ways to put gear together to make it work better. I do all that stuff because it frustrates me that I can't find that shit out there either. So I thought, well, why not? I've got the means, I'll get it, I'll try it, I'll make a video about it, and hopefully that helps people out. And so far, it has been. That's why I love doing this kind of stuff. Almost every day now, I get a message from somebody that tells me, hey, thanks. Like, I couldn't figure this out and, and you totally solved my problem. Or you helped me make a decision and, and what I was going to get 
or now I'm not going to get because of what you did. And that's why I'm doing this. I wanna show you that despite having a disability, which if you don't know, I'm a disabled veteran, I have a very angry spine, I'm always in pain, I always have a headache, and sometimes I'm like stabby miserable. But this, doing this is my passion. Sometimes I can't do it because of said stabby, angry spine. So when I can do it, that's what I love to do. And I love to help people out. And I love to show people that despite the fact that you might have some hurdles, like a debilitating disability, it doesn't have to hold you back. And sometimes it fuels my fire because I'm so pissed that I'm miserable that the only way I can kind of escape from that for a while is by concentrating on stuff like this, on concentrating on building all this stuff out, on taking the stuff that's back there behind the haze of pain and bringing it out of my thick, painful melon and making it a reality. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that's the joy of it for me, is figuring all that shit out. And if it doesn't work out, then I sell that shit and I buy something else. <laughs> That's really all I wanted to talk about today. I just wanted to talk about the new lighting setup, the new triple cam setup that my hair keeps going down into my head. Uh, you know, I just wanted to share some words of wisdom perhaps with you and encourage you not to stay frustrated because we all get frustrated and that's fine. And it's okay to be frustrated. It's all part of the process. It's all part of growing because you gotta get past that frustration and get busy and get your shit done. That's all I wanted to say today. That's all I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions about the lighting setup or the camera setup that I got going on here, how I did any of this, so on and so forth, drop a comment down below, send me an email. Remember, the ZV-1 is still for sale. If you want it, 700 bucks, the whole kit's yours. I have it on my Twitter. I have it on my video from yesterday, which was Saturday the 30th, if you go through my videos. And that's the way it goes. As always, thank you for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.